well. But do stay with us for this last upcoming match shortly. We're awaiting our players. The big tall Dane against the man from the Czech Republic should be a real uh, intriguing watch. There we are. They're part of the draw then. Adrian Ziolko awaits. Having had a win over Vladimir Malkov earlier. And how nice to see a Pranoy, the number 11 seed, back on the world circuit. This is his first tournament since breaking a toe. So lovely to see him back. Here he comes then. Victor Axelson from Othensa. Birthplace of Hans Christian Andersen. Six foot five, 21 years old. Up against the 29 year old from Prague, Peter Kukal from the Czech Republic. One meter 92 himself. What's that? Just over six foot three. Yeah. Six foot three. I think and it is, yeah, marginally like shorter. Yeah. I'd say he's a couple of inches shorter than uh, yeah. Victor, the fresh faced Victor Axelson. Been as high as uh, sixth in the world in March of this year. Currently ranked seventh. Kukal, well, he's ranked 49th. He's been as high as 38th in the world in September five years ago, 2010. <laughs> Both considerably taller. Is that Crystal Tan or umpire? I'm not quite sure. But both towering over her. Victor Axelson, of course, he was the bronze medalist in this uh, event in Copenhagen last year. And uh, his opponent lost in the second round. Interesting story there, Jill, isn't there, about uh, Carl? He cites ambition to be a top world championship 2014. Made a couple of quarterfinals, the Scottish Open and the Sri Lankan International. And uh, three second round appearances as well, Swedish Masters. Polish Open as well, and he lost uh, nine first round matches. There's a confirmation of our service judge and the umpire as well. As we just uh, Ready to play. undergoing the last minute or so of the warm up, these two pretty much ready to go. Just building up then to a men's first round singles encounter between the seventh seed and the man from the Czech Republic. It's our last offering today, our 15th match of the day. We'll be back with uh, six more days of coverage all the way through, continuing coverage throughout the course of this week. We've seen some terrific matches today. We've had six men's singles, two mixed doubles, two women's, two men's doubles, and three women's singles as well. So plenty for... Uh, Badminton fans to gorge themselves on in this badminton bonanza. There we are, you see this so often, don't you? The uh, customary shadow swinging and lunging. Now, nervous moments for the seed, you'd imagine. Jill with the expectation on his shoulders, frankly. And defending points, of course, from the bronze medal of yeah. last year. True, but I think um, he's such a well-balanced young man, is Victor Axelson. He's a charming character. I can remember the first time I ever met him, he came out of a lift and said, hello, Jill. And I thought, how on earth does he know who I am? I'm a totally different generation. Always makes time to speak to me and say good morning Ladies and so on. And Lovely gentlemen. man. And I hear that he's utterly professional as well. Gets to bed early and really puts his badminton first in his life. So uh, real credit to his professionalism. On my right, Victor. Selson Damage. And on my left, Peter Koka, Czech Republic. Victor to serve, lost all blame. So the towering Dane gets us underway and indeed One gets his scoreboard stop. reeling.
there was slight hesitation there from Axelson as to whether he should play the One, net shot, and that hesitation four. meant he played a very loose there. Took it so late, I think he was going to leave it. Oh, oh that's nice. He's an inspirational character, though, isn't he, Peter Two. Kukal? One. Very much so. This is a huge star in his home country. Been as high as 38th in the world. Oh, oh, oh. So it's over. Two, oh. Early doors out here then, just probing each other's games. Never met before, these two. Oh, bad defence. Well, yeah. again, hesitancy from uh, the seventh seed. Just uh, Three, two. a couple of strange decisions. Still uh, yet to settle, you feel. It's a sign of nerves, normally. Just needs to uh, ignite his performance with a really good point. That'll get him up and running. Oh. That's clever, isn't it? Not going for full power, going for angle. Four, three. Look at that defensive shot first, too. Nothing hesitant about that. Five, three. Back to back points then for Axelson. Oh, wonderful touch. Six, Normally, the, I, I would three. imagine the big, tall, strong men as, as not having as such good soft hands at end range, but just exquisite from Axelson in that regard so far. Yeah, I think he's a very complete player. Physically, he's strong. Tactically, he's very astute. Racket skills are lovely. And as you've already said, his professionalism, his dedication to the sport, you know, well, he's already a star. I mean, he's a, he's a top 10 player, already a bronze medalist in world championships, but he's not content with that. He wants to go further. He, he wants gold. You know, and that sort of okay. dedication to, to try and achieve that is... It's a certain personality type, yeah. isn't it, that drives you yeah. beyond the comfort of being already, you know, well secure within Please. your sport. Yeah. Just wanting to go that extra distance to get right to the top. He carries himself well, though. Indeed, both men are very strong in the core. They've got good poise and presence Six. on the court. And Slight lead of three points already to the seventh seed. And oh. again, Kukal just uh, misreading the Four. drift from left to right on our picture. Yeah, that's a good smash. Mm. Beaten by the sheer power. Five, eight. Buckling. Quality of return from Axelson set the point up nicely. So accurate, so Nine, quick to pounce. Five. So extending his lead to a four-point advantage now. Ten, five. Oh, service fault call. Oh, service fault called, struck service above the waist. Well, yeah, he's surprised at that, and so am I. But no argument. Victor? No.
Oh, that's nice. Oh, a brilliant rally from Kukal. What a finish as well. Axelsson looked in complete balance throughout and poised through that point, but wonderful uh, smash put away here. Yeah, this is his seventh World Championships for Kukal. Eight years older than Axelsson. That explains it. Too. Eight, having played ten, the powerful smash to win the last rally that one was all about angle and placement look only just clipping that racket head over the top of the shuttle no real follow-through considering he's under scoreboard pressure as well mm. fabulous yeah That was a very, very late call. A very assured call in the end, but very late. Okay. Kukal suggesting he wants to go to challenge that one. Let's go upstairs and see what uh, Hawkeye has to offer. Oh, I'm surprised challenge. he's allowed to. The challenge has to be immediate. But the call Peter. wasn't immediate. I think that was the issue. Call. It was very, very late. Out. Kukal responded as quickly as he could, I felt. There was real hesitancy from the Lions judge. Well, of course, if it was out, then the mid-game interval will only start from when the Hawkeye call oh, is made. Yeah, and of course, there's a sort of challenge, isn't there, between the Lions judges to sort of hold their dignity intact and not be wronged by a challenge. Let's have a look. In or out? Oh, it was on the line. Oh, what a good challenge. Mm. Well, well, well. Credit to Kukal there, keeping his wits about him. Correct challenge, so he still has two left. So a two-point advantage then for the seventh seed as they head to the mid-game interval. Just a quick uh, chat with the coach. As the court attendants get busy and just mop up any drops of sweat. Kenneth Jonasson, the Danish coach there. Former world number two. Former coach in England as well. Yeah, it's interesting. Peter Kukal doesn't have a coach with him. Well, as you say, Julie, he's obviously a man of experience, isn't he? Court if it's his seventh World Championships, 29 years of age, he's been around the block. Yeah, his first World Championships was 10 years ago. Czech Republic here though in Jakarta, is he? You'd think one of his teammates might come down and sit on the coach's bench. Maybe so he doesn't want it, maybe he doesn't like it. I didn't like coaching. 11. Well, no. we weren't allowed coaching in, in my day, in mid-game intervals and between games, only between the second and the third game, if it went to a decider, you were allowed coach's advice. So, you know, maybe that he just doesn't want 11. coaches oh. sitting courtside. It's a very personal thing, isn't it? Yeah. Who knows? Oh, oh fabulous. Yeah. 12, 11. Both men really dialed in from the off. We've had quality here. In this men's first round singles. Last match of the day here. the net down. An awful lot of this is about which player is getting on the attack first. 
I think the aggressor is winning more of the rallies. So if you're having to react to the, there we go again. First player to win in a downward direction wins the rally. It's not always the case in singles, and definitely not women's singles. An awful lot about trying to outmaneuver your opponent first, but we've got such tall athletes on court that the attacking play, they're playing with such angle that defensively, there really is only one option, and that's back to the net. So if you can close that net down. Yes, anything that sits up above that net band height is normally crushed, isn't it, by these towering giants. Yeah, very short rallies. Kukal with the single point advantage. Doing very, very well to turn things around and lead again. Take that, what a backhand smash. 14. So loose, so languid, so powerful up there. Okay. Synonymous normally with a forehand smash, that kind of power. Mm. Now, hang on, what's happening okay. here? Now, Kukal wanted the shuffle changed. Play on. Very close first game. That's a good lift. Oh, quality rally. Kukal with some excellent backhand drop shots there. To no avail in the end, though. Axelsson wise to it. So at the sharp end of the first game, Axelsson, the seventh seed, you feel, starting to accelerate away from Kukal. Kukal just gesturing to the umpire, I need to towel down. Yeah, and Axelsson's not happy that no. he's allowed to. It was a momentum stopper, really, yeah. wasn't it, you feel, to be brutally honest. No. Yeah, look at him, having a word with the umpire and saying, why? What, why? Well, he's on a little run there. Yeah, he's got a he's got a point, hasn't he? Desperate to uh, compound his momentum. Oh, that was going wide. Oh. Yeah. Won the point anyway, Axelson. 18, 14. make that six straight points mm. is that right I think so two points away from the opening game now then the seventh seed things looking up the man who's yet to secure a title in 2015 he's had three runner-up spots as Axelson Indian Open Swiss Open Australian Open but he does indeed take that opening game. 21 points to 14 to Victor Axelsson from Denmark. That's the start that he wanted. Yeah, a normal run of eight straight points. Thirteen, fourteen down. Goes straight through, is remarkable.
Confirmation then of the score, 21-14 to the seventh seed after just 15 minutes of play. Is it, Jill, all about Kukal getting Axelsson just to hit the shuttle up? Because they're both so strong overhead, aren't they? But it's getting that opportunity and how to expose each other. Seems a, a, a very tough sort of lock to pick. Yeah. Axelsson, uh, so secure all round. I had it in my own mind that if Kukal was going to win this match, he had to win in two. And... I think the physicality of uh, Kukal, he's, he's a very solid athlete, but stamina-wise, I think there may be not as strong as Axelsson. Tall. I didn't like that at all. Is that an ankle roll? Ooh. And even Victor Axelsson is calling for the tournament doctor. I really didn't like that. Was that the Achilles? Oh, no. No, it's not an Achilles. That's all right. He wouldn't be able to stand if mm. it was an Achilles. No, I think it was an ankle run. I think he managed to get off it pretty quickly. And, 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 and that's great because all he's got to do is keep moving around and hopefully he'll be okay. But, you know, it just depends. Some of those ankle injuries oh, can be really acute, can't they? I think he's all right. Oof. Yes, you're right. Thank that heavens. was ankle. That was ankle. Oh, dear me. Mm. Well, when you think okay. of all the, the trouble he's overcome in his life. So it's over. Two, one. And this is extremely resilient and characterful. Yeah, he's an amazing person. And he... Very accurate throw, wasn't it? <laughs> Long throw as well. Oh, so quick to get around that. That looked to most mere mortals to be a backhand smash, but Axelson just saw it early and took some long, languid paces to get around it on the forehand here. Look at that round arm smash. What a finish. Very difficult man to get off balance. Yeah, that's good judgment. So it's over. Two, four. I guess trailing a game a couple of points down now it's three up against it Kukal Axelsson starting to accelerate away and really showing us his quality right now very very solid and front running well as well still a, a lot of badminton to be played in this match of course Leave. Four, six. Very strong clear, wasn't it? Mm. Just wide. Shot from Victor 
response just had so much racket head speed on it. Look at this, his body spilling backwards. And the sheer snap from the wrist and the pace through that was just remarkable. Victor's playing everything flat at the moment. He's either going back to the net or if he's been given a lift, he's, he's hitting down or he's driving it. He's not lifting the shuttle at all. There we go, down the direction, back to the net. Down again. Clever. He knows about the drift. He doesn't want to risk hitting the shuttle wrong. Yes, that explains it. Very astute, these top, top players in terms of everything, the conditions around them, ever alert to very subtle changes. Kukal then trailing by five points in the second game and the loss of the first game as well. So very much up against it now as Victor Axelson, the seventh seed, really is finding his range and settling Blink. into the tournament, you feel. Ready. Again, okay, not lifting. That, that is just incredible Ten. control <laughs> from low down insane. from Axelson. Yeah. Such strength and poise here. Kukal's shot wasn't, well, that wasn't a great response, sat up too high, but. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't see the one that I was really mm, yes, talking about. Yes. It was prior to that. Beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah. Literally about a centimetre over the net, if that. Oh. Mm, again, he's, you know, I'm, without a drift, I'm pretty one, certain Victor Axelson ten. would have lifted that last shot instead of trying to play a cross-court net shot. But he's, he's obviously said to himself, I'm just not lifting. It, it, you know, virtually everything is back to the net or in a downward direction. Yeah. Thunderous oh. pace overhead again. So much up there and so much on the backhand side as well, Jill. So yeah. much heat he can generate off both sides overhead. Uh, that's a clever smash, a good use of the body smash. In singles, there's such a tendency to hit down the sidelines because you want to try and outmaneuver your opponent. And just occasionally, you need to just mix it up. And that body right smash pocket. is very, very effective. So, six points adrift. Kukal now plenty to ponder on this mid game interval. He's acquitted Hot himself one, well, he's not played badly seconds. at all. He had the sort of upset seconds. of that lunging ankle roll just earlier, but he seems to have recovered fine. 11, five. Well, he lists Play. one of his uh, idols as Emil Zatopek, of course, who won gold in the 5,000, 10,000 and marathon in the Helsinki Olympics. So, you know, uh, fellow... Uh, well, of course, it was Czechoslovakia in those days, but a fellow Czech and, uh, you know, uh, that uh, determination just to keep going and keep going. And I'm sure that sort of attitude shown by Emil Zatopek, track and field athlete, is coming through with Kukal. I like it when there's athletes from one sport look up to an athlete from another sport and former greats from your own country. I think that's nice. That's I do as well. And I think yeah. as well, you know, if he's the top player in the Czech Republic, then it's nice that he has, you know, somebody else, almost like a mentor figure, isn't it? It really yeah. does help. But I think as well, the, the, the persistence is, is terrific. Trailer Challenge was successful. successful. Just clipping the Service line over. there. 6-11. Victor, 1 Trellon remaining. Yeah, she wasn't awfully clear that a challenge had been made, or maybe I was just not paying attention no, enough. That's probably was. what the problem was. Oh, I was me whittering on about Emil's at Peg. Oh, 
just set, set up from a great return from Kukal, wasn't it? But what's interesting, Kukal has now realised that Axelsen is not lifting everything. Everything is coming back towards the net. So look how far he stepped forward to defend that one and how early he took it. And again. Oh, Victor needs to start mixing it up a bit more. Yeah, that's nice. It's wonderful to see how players, you know, you're talking about how the, their tactics and being so astute. One starts playing one way tactically, the opponent counteracts it, so then they change it up again. It's almost like a, a very physical game of chess. Mm. Certainly don't want to be clearing too much to this man in black. Phenomenal power overhead off both sides. It's really quite fearsome. Yeah. More to me, though, is, is his angle and placement rather than power. I think that's what does the damage. You know, it, it's fascinating to me. I, I've thoroughly enjoyed recently watching Wimbledon tennis. And, you know, the number of players that are hitting aces with not the fastest serves. You know, a Federer, it's his placement. You know, and I'm watching Axelson now and I'm thinking, yeah, it is a powerful smash, just as Federer's serve is, is powerful, but it's not the most powerful, it's where he places it, the angle. And the mixing up, it's super. Irrespective of the score, we've been treated to some really good points throughout. Yeah, it's been a good match. I'm enjoying this. Mm. And I'm enjoying seeing the uh, tactical nuances as well. The way that Kukal has sort of closed the net, as you say, because Axelson's playing a flat. Oh. oh, Jill, I see what you mean. It's very evident, isn't it? The yeah. angles, the subtleties, the yeah. touch of the big man really complements the fact then that his opponent has to clear a lot as well and then comes that destructive smash there's the block across court and then immediately having played to kukal's forehand side then goes for the winner down his backhand side always making kukal twist and turn that was very confident judgment wasn't it yeah, i thought that he didn't even look at the shuttle land 16. did he and again Another one, ripped feathers, needs replacing. So seven points between them in this game. Axelsson with a firm grip on this first round men's singles encounter now. You feel a lot of work to do for this man in red. Return of serve, spin and tumble on that net shot as well. Look at that! Look at that spin. Yeah, again, there's the you know he brushes across the, the feathers of the shuttle Nine. there. Looks as if he's going to play cross court, but by reverse spin. the reverse slice on that just keeps it straight. So clever. One thing that's been stand out from this man in black, the very few unforced errors that he's given away. Yeah. So solid in every department of his game. 19, and he has the walk of a winner, the poise of a winner. again and gets his weight coming forward as well as if to say if you get it back I'm gonna close this net down anyhow so that brings up 10 match points for Victor Laxelson the seventh seed
body blow, but uh, respectfully the hand 11, held point. aloft as if to apologize from Kukal. Saved one of them, still nine more to defend. Well, the match played in good spirit, but in the end, it's all Victor Axelson. 21-14, 21-11, with a very okay. assured performance in this Men's first round Victor. men's singles match. 21-14, So that uh, goes down as a as comfortable passage then through to a berth in round two for Victor Laxenson. After just, just over half an hour, he puts this match to bed. 21-14, 21-11, and that is our last match this evening our 15th match concluded so there's the results then we can just bring you the men's doubles that we brought you two men's doubles indeed back to back a men's singles win for kento momota the fourth seed against domka what a win that was in straight games and then we saw fanetri come through reasonably comfortable passage against the young Dutch player Eifbergen and then Victor Axelsen the seventh seed against Peter Kukal in straight games a really nice way to round up day one so that's the results of the day then having watched those players come through and of course the upset of the day which we didn't show you on that graphic was the sixth seed Chu Tian Chen losing so it's been a great opening day's play same time tomorrow first round action from all of us here in Jakarta.